Hey guys, Forza for you here today, and I'm going to be talking about turbochargers. Um, but not just turbochargers, it's the question if single turbochargers are superior or inferior to twin turbochargers. Now, before we actually get into that, if you guys don't actually know how turbochargers work, uh, you guys can stay and listen. Or if you guys do know already, then I'll, you guys can skip forward to the video, and I'll put an annotation. There it is. Alright, so uh, if you guys don't know anything about turbos, stay here and listen. A turbocharger is composed of a compressor side and a turbine side. What you normally see is the compressor side, the uh, nice and shiny, cool looking side. The other side, however, is the turbine in which exhaust flows through. That side is connected to a exhaust manifold and the exhaust uh, pipe itself. Now what happens is that after the combustion and the cylinders goes off, the exhaust goes through the exhaust valves to the exhaust manifold in which it spins the turbine side of the turbo. And in turn spinning the opposite side, the compressor, at the same speed because they're connected through a shaft. So to conclude the turbine side, exhaust from the combustion goes through to the exhaust manifold through the turbine side of the turbocharger. And thus spinning the compressor side of the turbocharger. Now what the compressor side does is sucks in air and pressurizes it and makes it more dense and shoots it through into the cylinder itself. Now many people run intercoolers, their side mount, which is you know, the intercoolers are inside of the car, usually in the front, or the front mount intercooler, which is more popular and those are the ones that most people see. And uh, yeah, so those are located in the front of the car, of course. Now if you have an intercooler, Air from the compressor side of the turbo goes into the intercooler and which is cooled down either by air or water, usually both, and that goes into the cylinder. Now the whole point of having a turbocharger is so that you can shove more air into the cylinder and you can add more fuel, which in turn makes a bigger, more powerful explosion, thus creating more horsepower and torque. So here's how turbos work. Exhaust from the combustion goes through to the exhaust manifold into the turbine side of the turbocharger, spinning it, which causes the compressor side of the turbo to spin, and then the compressor side sucks in air, and then compresses it, shoots it through the intercooler, if you have one, and then to the cylinder itself. So that's pretty much how they work. And if you're listening to me now and saying, wow, Forza Few, you are entirely wrong, please do leave a comment below and tell me what I said wrong and all that. And if you didn't think that I did a good job explaining it, then you can look it up on YouTube. I'm pretty sure there's thousands of videos to show you how turbos work. And uh, yeah, so let's get to the comparison of single turbo to twin turbo. So here I have the graphs of both the single and twin turbo. Um, not too much of a difference. Both make the exact same amount of horsepower and torque. The only real difference is maybe weight. But if you look really, really close at the graphs, you can see that the twin turbo spools up a little bit quicker than the single turbo. Now we're going to go to the Le Mans, or the Le Mans as the Americans call it. But the, uh, I think the proper pronunciation is Le Mans because it's French. But uh, yeah, so we're going to go on the straight and see the difference in spool times. First up is a... 2000 RPM pull from second gear. Twin turbo is the clear winner. Now we're going to do a 2000 RPM pull but in fourth gear. This run was much, much closer and it was actually pretty hard for me to decide, but once I got the right screenshot, Twin Turbo won once again. After watching that, you're probably thinking Twin Turbo was a lot better than Single Turbo. Not necessarily true. 
Just because twin turbos spool up a little bit faster than single turbos does not mean that they are better. Single turbos tend to make a lot more horsepower, which isn't necessarily accurate, I guess, because given the right situations and conditions, twin turbos can make just as much, maybe even more than single turbos. But the problem is that most likely you're going to be able to fit a big single turbo rather than two medium sized turbos just because of the size and shape of the engine bay. The reason why twin turbos spool up a little bit faster is because turbos respond better to pulsing exhaust flow and that's created by you know each individual piston pushing and combusting. That being said, twin turbos usually work better on V engines rather than inlines and single turbos work better on inlines rather than Vs because since you have a twin turbo on a V, one is on one side, one is the other side. If you have an inline engine and try to run twin turbo, you'll have all the cylinders pushing into one common manifold. So what happens is that it smooths out the flow and it makes it not as pulsy, I guess. So and that's not what you want because, like I said before, turbos respond better to pulsating exhaust flow. So by having a turbo on each side of a V, there's one manifold on each side, which connects to the turbo, of course. But what that means is that it's a better pulsating flow because each piston isn't being shoved into one manifold, whereas an inline six or whatever engine you're running. Now, I'm not saying inline sixes with twin turbos are bad engines. The 2JZ GTE using Supra as an inline six twin turbo, insane engine. And the RB26 DETT from the Skyline, insane engine. Both inline sixes, both running twin turbos. Now there's two types of twin turbo setups, there's sequential and then there's parallel. Sequential is when there's a smaller turbo and then a the bigger turbo, and the smaller turbo runs at lower RPMs. How that's done is that all the car's exhaust goes in that, to that little turbo to spool it up very quickly, and then once the small turbo reaches its maximum boost, all the exhaust goes into the bigger turbo, which of course goes to a much higher set boost or amount of PSI. So in turn, you get a much, much quicker spool up time in the lower RPMs and then you can continue throughout the higher RPMs with a much higher amount of PSI. Whereas a parallel setup, both turbos are the exact same size and they run simultaneously splitting the amount of work each turbo has to do, resulting in less turbo lag. So by now I hope I've educated you in the big war of single turbo versus twin turbo and um, if you're watching this and you could point out every little wrong thing I said please do comment below and tell me what I said wrong because you know I hate being wrong so thanks guys so much I guess this is somewhat like a thanks for 300 video because I really can't think of one and I put a lot of work into this and um, yeah thank you guys so much you guys have an awesome